cheating, spoofing, gaming. These are all terms you've probably heard of if you're involved with helium mining, and it is definitely a valid concern, but I wanted to make this video to talk about what exactly it is, how people do it, and then what we can do as a community to try to come together to at least fix it or see how this might resolve itself over time. The whole point of the Helium Network is to have individuals set up their Helium miners and provide coverage for that area that they're physically located in. Spoofing is the situation where the miner itself is actually in a different physical location versus what it's being said it's actually in. For instance, you could have a miner that's actually over here and the location when setting it up was asserted down here. Why would someone spoof their location? One, it's an honest mistake and they by accidentally drag the pin to the wrong location, hit the save button and realized, oh crap, I put it in the wrong spot. Or two, the more likely situation is that they're trying to fake the location and make more helium. That first example where they're not really doing too much harm because they're not really gaming the system is the location is just in a weird spot. For instance, you have these miners that are set up in the ocean themselves. And unless this is on a random boat, these miners aren't actually earning anything. You can see zero HNT, their location is established in the ocean, but they're not taking from the pool of helium that's being distributed on a monthly basis. A situation that looks suspect of gaming or cheating the system is this cluster of miners. It just seems too perfect in terms of the perfect spacing. It's symmetrical. And if all of these were established around the same time frame, then it's possible that this is a spoofing situation where all of the miners are actually located in one place, but they're being asserted in different locations in order to maximize the earnings. When we all went through learning about helium and finding out, okay, you need these locations, they need to be 300 meters away, you realize I can only put one miner in my house because if I have them all in one house, they're going to be competing with each other. My earnings are going to be bad. So therefore I need to find new locations. I need to contact business owners, family, and spread out the miners. Whereas some people think, how do I fake the location, have 20 miners in my house, but have them seem like they're actually separated out by that required distance to still earn and I don't have to bother anyone. Part of the problem is there's no GPS within the actual helium miner. So it has to rely on signal that's being sent out in order to determine the distance between these miners. Because we do see these errors, and I see these myself, when you witness another miner that's too close in your hex, you get this witness too close error and the mining or the witnessing of that beacon is invalid. So how do these spoofers get around the situation if if all of their miners are in the same exact room. The spoofers essentially have to reduce the signal to make it seem like it's a valid transaction where the miners are actually 300 meters apart. They can do this possibly by putting miners in a box, any way to reduce the signal from one miner to another to make it seem like a real world valid transaction. And that's what makes it tough because with this cluster of miners, even though it looks suspicious, it still could be valid where these miners are actually in the hexes they say they are. Unfortunately, the only way way to prove that these clusters or certain miners are acting in bad faith is if you actually physically went to the location and prove that the miner wasn't there. Which, if you think about blockchain decentralization, you don't want to introduce any physical checking to this network because that adds an extra layer of trust, which the whole point of this is a trustless system in a decentralized network to provide coverage for data transfers. The big reason that this is happening now is because because a lot of the earnings for helium miners comes from proof of coverage and less so from the network data transfer. As time goes on, the network data transfer is the piece that will pay the miners the most. So having a location where people actually need the miner in order to get data transfer functionality, that will be more important than having proof of coverage out in the middle of nowhere or having these perfect clusters. So we've established there's already steps in the protocol to reduce the amount of spoofing, but it's not perfect perfect and the system can still kind of be gamed. What can we do as a community or what can we do in order to stop spoofing? And there's actually proposals that can be put out to the community to vote on to solve this spoofing problem. And let's talk about one, which is HIP40. The idea behind HIP40 is to create a denial list of hotspots that are suspicious of gaming the system. And this list would be provided to validators and anytime that hotspot is transacting, there would be a similar error to invalidate 
invalid transaction when witnesses are too close, you would just have the tag of deny list. Now, how are these hotspots chosen? They would create a committee to review these different miners that seem suspicious. And once it's agreed that they are gaming the system, they would put that miner on the denial list. And that miner would have to appeal that they were actually in good faith and they're not gaming the system. I love that there's a proposal, but I don't love this one only because it adds this dynamic of human intervention, another layer of trust. Can you trust the committee that's being chosen? What happens if they're choosing miners that aren't actually acting bad and they're interfering with their earnings? Is that fair? I just don't like that it's not just built into the protocol and automated. You also may be thinking, hey, I thought proof of coverage version 11 was supposed to fix this. It really didn't attack the spoofing part. And I think that's a miscommunication from either influencers or just a misunderstanding of what exactly it was. As it's been stated by the team itself saying that proof of coverage version 11 actually doesn't have to do with spoofing. Proof of coverage version 11 seemed to be more around the regulations as well as adding regional support for the different miners. And while that is an official proposal, there's people that are coming up with good ideas even on Reddit. Three days ago, someone basically said you could reward people for scanning for miners. If people are scanning and the helium miner actually isn't in the location that it says it is, then it could be tagged as suspicious and be added to some type of list. Now, this would require people to get paid in order to scan for miners. So this is once again, a little bit manual, but at least with this idea, it does solve the problem of, okay, you don't have to physically go into someone's house and prove that they have a miner. You can just do a scan from a distance. Again, there's no perfect solution. I don't know if this is possible or I'm just an idiot, but could you connect the internet connection of these devices with its location? If there's 20 miners getting the internet connection from the same spot, maybe it's easier to prove that they can't all be located 500 meters apart perfectly if they're getting one source of internet connection, let's say via ethernet. I don't know if that can be gamed, but I'm just thinking out loud right now. Is that a possible solution? I don't know the exact solution that can take care of this. I'm just trying to bring awareness to people of what's going on and try to clear up some of the misinformation because as a community, we also have to vote on these proposals if people do come up with good ideas in order to get them implemented. And the Helium team can kind of solve this problem because obviously no one wants to see people cheating and gaming the system. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button as well as consider subscribing to Main Street Wolf where we talk cryptocurrency, investing, anything to do with money. Thanks guys for watching and have a great day. Thank you.